Hi team and welcome back. So we had just been uh, talking about uh, the risk register. That's uh, tab nine again in your project management toolkit for supervisors. So uh, notice again with the team, uh, you're doing this with the team, you're asking key stakeholders what risks they see. So you're writing them all down. The risk register will have all risks. And again, you'll note the probability and impact that will be a uh, subjective at first. And really it's to help you prioritize. Try and put your risks into a risk category. As I mentioned, uh, a tr what's the trigger event that you're going to keep an eye on or your risk manager is? What would be the potential response? How about a, a contingency plan if, uh, if you needed some money or other resources to work that risk? Who are you going to make the owner monitoring for that trigger and building the risk response for you? And then I check regularly on the status, okay? Uh, and always looking to retire old risks or add new ones as they're found. I had just ended the conversation in part one. Again, this is a one slide summary of really what's going on back here in slide two, walking through these processes. It's the same view, but in picture format. So we're going to, we're going to want to plan risk management for our project. And, and after planning, the next thing we're going to do is look to identify all individual risks and even assign them a category. The advantage to a category is when you group risks together, you can use common responses for multiple or different events, right? And you're also identifying here potential owners and potential responses. Your risk uh, register should list uh, most of those things as well. Uh, we do a qualitative analysis always. So every one of these individual risks goes through qualitative analysis. It's fast. Yes, it's subjective, but you're an expert. Your team's an expert. So it's fast, but you've got to put things in priority, right? Running out of water when it's a two-hour job in 45-degree weather is not the same risk as working in the center lane of a highway putting out cones, right? So that you can do some construction or replace a light bulb in the overhead uh, lamps of the project. So you have to prioritize those risks. Then of course, for a few quantitative risk analysis would be required much more intensive, way beyond this conversation. And frankly, if I were you, I would say, I would offer to the company uh, for their support or their guidance on those big items. And then uh, uh, what would be the response for any of the really big risks? Those should get quantitative. Something with a big probability and probably a big impact. If it doesn't have a big probability or a big impact, I wouldn't touch it with quantitative. Not worth my time. And then, of course, plan those risk responses. Make sure you write down triggers. Assign risk owners. Now, remember we did this potentially here in the risk register. Now in the risk register, we're making them permanent over here after we've done some planning. And there are responses we can do to threats. So if your threat, if your or to your risk, if your risk is a threat, remember we said risks by definition are an uncertainty. They're either a threat or an opportunity. If it's a threat, these are the common responses that you have available to you. You can accept the risk. Hey, if it happens, it happens. Nothing I can do about it. You can try and avoid it by not doing the activity that leads to the risk. You could uh, reduce the risk with some mitigations like uh, tying yourself off if you're climbing higher, or you could transfer the risk, for example, to insurance. Uh, we do this all the time with our car insurance. We transfer the risk to the insurance company. Uh, for opportunities, they're uh, similar. Avoid is the same. We could just avoid it or accept it, or we could enhance it, right? We could build maybe a coalition. We could talk to somebody who can make that op risk opportunity happen and try and influence it that way. Always keep an eye on your 
risk register and implement them if you see them coming, which requires monitoring along the way. Uh, I did mention I love quotes. This one by Jack Lemon. If you think it's hard to meet pe new people, try picking up the wrong golf ball. But oh, boom, psh, that's meant to be funny. You're going to meet people, that's for sure. I have just a couple final slides I wanted to throw out at you. There is this term in project management called uh, contingency reserves. And with right here, with contingency reserves, that's what you're planning for, right? Remember, we write down the initial plan in the risk register, but then we're going to plan and finalize it. And what it's saying is this is for known unknowns. Not a critical term, but it, it's really not that hard either. We know it's a risk, but the risk by itself is an uncertainty. So what we don't know is if it will trigger or happen. And so what the project manager does is the project manager identifies the risk, does some planning, justifies it to the project sponsor, your boss, whoever owns the budget that you're using, and they go, hey, great idea, Schmitty or Susie. Um, you know what? Here's some money. Th this set of risks, that's an opportunity. This risk is a threat. Here's the money in advance. If it happens, let me know. It's not really part of your budget, but it's a good thing to be prepared for. And I'm glad you identified it. That's what the sponsor is saying to you. Good job. Nicely done. There is another type, and that's called management reserves. So there are only two types of reserves. Contingency reserves. This the project manager owns because you've identified the risks and planned for them. And then management reserves. Notice these, this is a little different. This is for unknown unknowns. It means we didn't identify the risk and we didn't see it coming as a result. So what we really have to do is go to the sponsor and ask them for support. And what's our boss usually say? Um, what's this going to cost me? How did this happen? Why did this happen? Why didn't you identify it, right? A uh, hundred questions. Be prepared for those. As a manager, I regularly would put away a portion of my budget. So in a certain company I worked for, when I managed capital projects, so capital project is capital money to improve the infrastructure. And it has to be spent by the end of the year. So what I would do is if I had a $1 million dollar antivirus rollout program for the year, I would tell the finance person, do not give that number to my project manager. The project manager gets uh, $850,000. I would keep back maybe $870,000. I'd keep back about 12% of it, of that budget, just in my knowledge and the finance manager's as a management reserve for those unknown unknowns. And it happens, right? Uh, I once had a vendor tell me the type of disks I needed. They were the cheap kind. They assured us it would be great. Went out and bought them, spent a few hundred thousand dollars or had my project manager do it. Later, when they couldn't get the logging infrastructure system working, they said then they needed the expensive drives. We'll see, I've already paid for the cheaper drives because you told me to, expert. So that's management reserves, right? I had the money. Uh, nobody foresaw it because we did ask the question and by an expert, we were told the answer. They were wrong, right? Management reserves. And the last note today is um, risk over time, right? There's an association with risks over time. Risks get retired over time. So the, the chances of a risk occurring is going to drop as your project moves from beginning to completion. But notice, uh, if you do have a risk happen early on, its impact is low. But if you have a, a risk happen later, say a threat, the cost to fix a threat later, maybe you didn't identify it or you didn't plan for it or you didn't mitigate it. The cost to fix it later in your project is much, much higher. So we really want to identify all the risks up front, deal with them when the impact to our project is low. And as they get retired over time, we get to breathe some sigh of relief. Okay. 
that's uh, it for me for this week. Let's go back to Moodle and uh, we'll work the assignment together. It'll be fun. I look forward to the cards and letters and let me know if anybody would like to do a call.